Okay, so today we are going to be making snake. First things first, we're going to be going through and creating the scene so you can actually like see how the game is going to be laid out. And then we're going to be making the actual functionality, starting with movement, then going on to dying, and going on to fruit generation and expansion. Let's start making the scene. So make sure this is solid color, set the black because high contrast, let's go with that. Yeah, that sounds good. Now that's going to make, we're going to make a new sprite and we're going to create a square sprite, which is a default unity one. And just drag it on. And this is going to be our wall texture so just name this wall and here's Wonderwall now let's make this gray let's make this big let's go with 9.5 actually 10 10 uh, make sure it can only be seen outside of the mask because what we're going to do to make the game area more obvious is we're going to create a sprite mask Now let's drag the square on, and let's make this 9.5, 9.5. There we go, you can see we obviously have our little play area clearly marked. Now let's make the game manager. The game manager script is going to hold all the functionality. But before we make that, we have to make the game manager object that, that will hold the game manager script. And while we're doing that, let's also make the snake segment holder. And that should be self-explanatory. And if it isn't, the snake segments are going to spawn underneath that. And let's just make this game manager. And here we go. As soon as it starts up. Do 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 do. Okay, so Snake it works through a series of, well, the way we're going to program Snake is going to work through a series of this, lists. Okay, so first is going to be the just general coordinate list of type vector 2, which is named this coordinates. See what I knew. This vector 2. Next one's going to be a list of indexes specifically snake indexes and the next one is going to be a list of open indexes and then we're also going to need a reference to the Keep the snake segment prefab. A reference to the snake segment holder. An update number because we don't want to do this by frames per second because most computers can run snake at more than 60 FPS. So if we were to get like 273 FPS running Snake, it would be unplayable for the most part, unless we aren't reliant on FPS. So we are going to make our game unreliant on FPS, but reliant on timescale. So just do like float updates per second. And now we are also going to need to do a public vector to x bounds public vector to y bounds actually no I'm gonna make it so it's a square so just do grid size public grid spacing Node size. 
Okay, so node size is going to refer to the size of the snake segments and the size of the fruit when we add that. So let's just make it so it refers to the size of the snake segments first off. So just do snake segment prefab dot transform dot position not position dot local scale I done is equal to vector three, not vector two, because if you do vector two, the z axis will have a value of zero. And Unity renders things even when they're in 2D, they're rendered in 3D. So it will make it so it's impossibly thin. And the rendering will be like, hey, no, I can't do that. And it won't do that. So vector 3.1 times size, not size of, node size. Okay, now that we have that, let's start. Well, let's continue making the variables. So we're only going to do a public vector to int grid bounds. Let's see. Yep. And now let's so we will do a four. Yep. So standard one, let's do Y, and then let's do X. Let's change these to floats, and you'll see why in a second. And now we're going to do divided by two F. And now, as so you see it compared to. It would create a float out of that. And now we do the exact same thing here. But we're actually going to make this. It's more than, let's add parentheses. And add grid spacing to this. And also, while we have grid spacing, we're going to want to do plus equals grid spacing and just copy and paste that and done the x1 soon. And actually, just copy and paste all of this as well. Okay, there we go. Now that's sort of adding coordinates. So do use coordinates dot add new vector to x comma y okay now let's add the indexes or indices I don't really know how to pronounce that well, not pronounce that. I don't know which word it is I think it's indices but indexes is uh, I don't even know oh well, it's, it's irrelevant so we need to establish the grid bounds first so grid bounds is equal to new vector 2 int and let's just do grid bounds plus equals new vector to int one comma one. Now this is going to work as long as it's a perfect square. If you want for a challenge, make it so this can function when it's not a perfect square and it's a rectangle. That require you to change this. It require you to change how these are made, but it shouldn't be too difficult. And now let's actually make this a function. So grid bound dot x, grid bounds dot y, and change the i to a j. Change the i to a j. Okay, now that we have that, let's start adding them. So open indexes dot add new vector two int i comma j. Okay. Now that we have that, we are going to want to do. We're going to want to start spawning the snake. So we need to make another variable of vector two of vector two in for the snake head index. And also, we're going to want to make a queue for the snake segments.
So index is going to be the midpoint. So we're going to do new vector to int grid bounds dot x divided by two grid bounds dot y divided by two. And the way this works is, uh, as you know, these are integers. And when you divide an integer, it will just lower the value. So dividing like five by two will give you two. Dividing ten by two will give you five. Dividing thirteen by two will give you six. Nothing overly really complex. And dividing one by two will give you zero. So now that we have this value, we are going to add it to the snake indexes. We are going to remove. Oops. We are going to remove it from the open indexes. We are going to create the snake index by using the instantiate function. Or method. That's anonymous. Snake segment prefab. At oh yeah, we want to watch this. Oh, be pay attention. I'm going to do this next part. I probably do it wrong the first time, but that's what bug fixing is for. So, snake at index dot x plus dot y times grid bounds dot x. I think. I'm fairly sure. Quaternion dot identity. Quaternions are submitted to represent rotation in 3D space. It doesn't come from in Bulldog. You can Google some more advanced stuff on it. It's a rather complicated subject, so I won't go into it. And then snake segment holder. And then there we go. Now let's remember to queue it up into the snake segments. So we actually have a list of segments. So that in queue. Oh yeah, and queue is the function you use to put things into a queue. DQ is the function you use to, put, to take things out of a queue. And now let's see what's the problem with this. Oh, it's not a transform. Oh really, is that the case? Let's just fix that. And let's just make that less redundant. Okay, what are we missing? What are we missing? So we have both of the indexes. Now we are going to need to make it so it actually updates. So we're going to make this happen in a coroutine. The update loop, the update, the update loop is going to happen in a coroutine. So that way it runs concurrently. We don't need to worry about it while we're programming the rest. So just make a private enumerator movement updater. Start coroutine movement updater. Remember, all coroutines have to be of type I in Here. And we're going to do a while alive. And we're also going to add an alive variable over here. Public all alive. Wall alive. Yield return new wait for seconds. One divided by updates per second. Now, if you were to try this, it wouldn't work for multiple reasons. First and foremost, there isn't actually anything that happens when this runs. But the reason I'm going to get that is the fact that this is an integer. So, what it says here will actually happen is that it will just floor to zero and it won't wait at all. So just make sure to do that. The behavior is a bit finicky because it works properly over here. And I honestly don't. I can't tell you why it's that finicky. But just to be safe, make sure it's a float. It's just as simple as adding an F. So now while we're here, let's create another function. This function will be the one that actually controls the movement. So let's name this move snake head. Pass in the new position. That's not the right hand brackets. My apologies. There we go. And here we go. And then snake head index plus. Uh, let's just make a direction. Now we're going to need to add a method for controlling the snake. That's why I made this direction. That's why I referenced this direction variable. Or let's just name this vector to two int direction. Direction direction is equal to vector to int the up. So when the player starts out, it will be going up. Hopefully, if not, we're going to just change around these things until it is going up. 
now let's make it actually work. So we're just going to go to the update function, make a variable of type vector 2 and call new gear, or new gear short for new direction, assign, assign the, the, the value of direction, go through a series of input checks, so if input dot get key down, key code, oops, dot up arrow, and now we're just going to assign new deer is equal to vector2 and dot dot. Wow, that was so complicated. It isn't, which is good, because you want to keep it simple. Keep everything as simple as you can. Okay, now onto the right arrow, and then onto the left arrow, then onto the down arrow. It's down, left, right. Okay, now looking at this, you might. Now it's a sign up. Now looking at this, you might have already spotted the problem. What if the player wants to go to? Well, one player is already going to the right, but they want to go to the left. They can just press left now. However, doing that traditionally in Snake means you're running back into yourself and lose the game. So to prevent that, we're going to add in a check. So we're going to do if math f dot absolute value of the y value of the direction. Compared to the y value of the original direction, it will only then assign it. So this means that the axis has to change. All of these are either 1 or 0 on an axis, or either negative 1, 0, or 1 on an axis. But one of the axes is always 0. So if the y-axis always has to be either 1 or negative 1 for it to be moving on the y-axis. And when you make that absolute value, it has to be either it has to be 1. So if it's not 1, it is no longer moving on the y-axis, which means it's moving on the x-axis. So that simple comparison allows us to ensure that the direction is actually changing, instead of just going in reverse. Which I mean, it's also changing, but that's not the change we want. So now, let's start adding action movement. So if alive, or if not alive, like remember, exclamation mark means not, then it is going to return. Okay, now we're going to want to make it move. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the vast, we are going to take the vast segment and move it to the front by doing the following: transform vast segment is equal to snake segments dot dq. Now that we have dequeued it, vast dot position is equal to coordinates. Just scroll back up, copy and paste this line, add that line here, so it actually functions without a problem, and then uh, segment dot position, no, not bad, snake segments dot in queue, the segment. Okay, this will handle actually moving it via segments, but now we need to make sure that the coordinates update. So let's do that. Let's go to these. Just copy and paste those two and bring them down there. Snake segments, add, new position, remove. Remove snake indexes zero. So we're currently using the snake indexes list as effectively a queue already. So let's just do the same thing. And then we are going to want to do snake indexes dot remove at zero. Now you might be wondering, hey, doesn't that work the exact same way as a queue? Yes. However, queues are faster. Why we aren't using a queue here? 
I honestly have no idea. If you want to change it, you can make it work. Go ahead. But this is for convenience's sake. And don't forget, we are going to want to add this. My bad. Dot remove new position. Okay, let's see if that works. I really hope you did not get a Discord notification. If so, my apologies. Let's check this. Let's set this to negative five, five, uh, point two five, point two. Actually, these have to be zero. I got them. Four, five. That can go there. Let's make the snake. Make sure it drags, or it draws on top of everything else. Standard square sprite. Just drag it onto there. Here we go. Now just drag this onto here. Three, two, one. Let's see, does it compile? Or does it run for the very first time? Yes, it does, and look at that. It all functions properly. But it's a bit slow. That's uh Oh, what's this? We just ran out of range. Huh. I wonder why. So look at our snake of the nicks. And look at our grid bounds. Remember, arrays start at one. What? Well, no, they don't. Don't ignore what I just said. Arrays start at zero. They have always are zero in C sharp, and they will always need to start at zero in C sharp. So our issue is we're trying to refer to the sixteenth, or we're trying to refer to the eighteenth position when we have that. However, there are only 16, well, we can only go up to 16 with index, because there are only 17 positions. So what we're going to do to fix that is we're going to clamp the new position. So as new position is actually referring to an index, what we can do is make sure it's actually within the index. So if new pause.x is less than zero. Actually, let's do less than one, or new pause dot x is more than or equal to grid bounds dot x minus one. Now, the reason why I'm doing minus one and one is so I can have a little buffer space, so we can actually do this properly. Now just gonna copy and paste that into the exact same thing for y. Then I'm going to do alive is equal to false and return. Again, I might have said earlier, I've already forgotten. Return makes it just break out the function. And let's see if this functions. Let's see, let's see. Does it function? Did it print? Did it just stop? A live stop, so it appears to have worked. Oh yes, let's, out, let's also make it print that it died. Debug.log died. Okay, there we go. We have it so that snake can move and die. Let's also make it so the snake can expand. But before we do that, let's ensure that there's enough space. So let's do... Hmm, I'm not quite sure. Eight, and let's see how far I can go. Yes. Can't go there quite yet. A little bit farther. Nine.
a little bit farther. Ten. Yes, there we go. Now let's see if you can go down. Okay, now let's try left and right. Bug fixing is, uh, or rather, testing for values is always such a pain. We should probably also increase the updates for a second while we're doing this, but uh, yeah, I can probably do that, and we're on the last test, so. Great, everything works as it should. We now know 10 is the value we want to have. And now let's add a method for spawning fruits. So private void spawn fruits. Oh yeah, there's no real reason I have public or private for the functions. I just do because there aren't any other scripts in this project. So I just include them. So private void spawn fruits. First to spawn a fruit, we well, need to actually have a fruit object to spawn. So let's just do public transform fruit prefab. And let's also do a private transform fruit object. The fruit prefab will be the game object that the, that the fruit will spawn. Will will be the fruit game object that will be spawned into the scene and the fruit object will be the current scene representation of the fruit and now we're also going to need a fruit index and let's just add spawn fruit here there we go now let's make this actually function. So first things first, we're going to need to find a new position. A new position. Thankfully, due to the way we're managing the open indexes list, we can do we can just take a random index from the open indexes list by doing this. Vector two int new fruit position is equal to open indexes array random dot range. 0, comma, open indexes dot count. Okay, so what this does is it will just pick a random element from this list and then it will assign this new fruit position. And now we're going to use that new fruit position after we destroy the current fruit object. Actually, we won't destroy the current fruit object. So fruit object dot position is equal to coordinates. And much like we did over here, we're just gonna take this, slap into some of these, change these. Okay. There we go. That should spawn our new fruit. And I don't see any issues with that. So let's make it so you can actually collect the fruit. So if new pause is equal to fruit index, what should we do? Well, what I want to do is I want to make another variable public int excess length that will determine how much more the snake needs to grow. Let's also make a variable called fruit score to determine how much length is added every single time you eat the fruit. So let's go back down to here. So excess length plus equal fruit score. Great. And let's also do spawn fruit. And let's do something here as well. So if excess length is more than zero, well, 
since f x length is less than or equal to zero, x length is equal to zero, so it can't be negative. Let's just move this line equal to no. And let's do this. Actually, this part can stay. That part stays the same. Nope, this part also stays the same. We take these and we keep them there. And if it's not zero, I'll do, do I mean, to subtract one from x's length. And I am going to take the last segment. is equal to nope, that's fine instantiate it I'm just going to go all the way back up because we already have it so we're just going to spawn another one of these and let's see should that work then that should change that Okay, yeah, that should work. I don't see a reason for it not to. And now it's actually adding the fruit. So let's just clone the snake segment, make it like green or something. Do 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 do, and move it over here. There we go, fruit, fruit transform, fruit score one, fruit index. Let's see if this actually functions. If it does, I will be pleasantly surprised. No, it does not. Why does it not? Let's find out. 152 new fruit position, fruit object. Oh, oh yeah, my bad. Let's make the very, very first thing. Fruit object is equal to instantiate fruit prefab. How much transform? And now let's try that again. And that should just generate a random fruit. Well, random, but yep, there we go. Huh. Notice a problem? Yes, it can place with my previous things. So let's actually remove that buffer now that we know how it works. And that shouldn't be a problem anymore. Actually. Hmm. Nope. Yeah, let's remove the buffer. Here we go, and let's shrink the size of the grid space by 0.25, 9.75, that's not what I intend to happen. Let's make it 9 since we can't make it any bigger. And Let's also reduce the updates per second to one. And let's just wait and wait and wait. And let's not wait that much longer. One more. Okay, that's pretty good. But what we can also do is we can take the sprite mask 
and reduce it to 9.25 and 9.25 and remember that remember those values and there we go that's a bit more accurate presentation of the walls and let's see if this all functions properly here we go that's one hmm it doesn't function properly I wonder why he never actually assigned fruit index if you notice that fruit index is equal to new fruit position there we go that's a stupid mistake oh well they happen they happen a lot we're bored we're nearing 40 minutes in length of this thing and we're not done quite yet but don't worry everything is fine hey look at that it's a bit lagging but it works let's see if I can if I am bad at the game okay let's try it again which is 10 but if you notice there it doubled the amount of fruit needed so let's look at the reason why so so that's the one hmm Okay, let's actually see if we can replicate that. Nope. Okay. Guess we just got very lucky where it spawned. And, well, now we technically have snake. So, ta-da! If that's all you wanted to know, you're done here. Oh, wait, wait, is it? We, have, we can't kill ourselves yet, can we? No, we cannot. So, what we're going to do to make sure we can, is you want to be able to die in this game, is another check here. Or, that's not the or. Or, snake indexes that contains new pause. Okay, so what this will do is it will just make sure that whenever you go into the snake, you will die. However, you have to notice the problem with how I did this. Yes, that's right. If you go into the last section of your tail, where it would shrink otherwise, you will kill yourself an accident. So let's move this from here. All the way down to if here. There we go. So if snake, and let's just copy and paste this and move that there. And let's also make it a bit more obvious that you died. So do public material and materials are what Unity uses to actually render stuff they determine how game objects are rendered obvious definition I know my bad this name is snake material and that's assign some values so snake material dot set color 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 dot white Let's do same thing, but we're going to change it to red in the when it dies. So snake color dot color dot red. Okay, here we go. And now let's actually make a snake material. Uh, material, same as snake. 
make it of type sprites default and go on to the snake segment and just drag it on there we go and let's see how this works and I forgot to assign it my bad sorry let's just drag it onto there and here we go let's see Look at that, the snake has died. Nice, nice. Now, once we, once we make sure to test that this actually functions, let me just... Hmm. I just noticed a problem. So if you go up and then to the right, you will die. We can just do another check, so public. Oh dear. Let's just change this from new deer to old deer. And let's just assign old deer to direction. There we go. And let's see if that works. As you may have noticed, it did not in fact work. What a pain. What a pain. Let's fix that. Oh, let's continue to try and fix that. So, we can't do this, apparently. So, the reason why is you press right, change that. Let's change it to and and see if that works. Minor fix, but maybe. Okay, that appears to function. That's good. That's very, very good. Okay, well, we have snake now, actually. One more check. Let's make sure that the snake length is good, but I'm fairly sure this all works. I mean, we can definitely run some walls. And we can also just think up the speed to. Oh no, you can't run into yourself. Yes, you can. Oh well, that was a something. Okay, so you can run into yourself. Hmm. Weird, good to know. Okay, that's everything. Everything appears to work. Here's a few challenges. Make it so there's a length tracker. Make it so you can restart the game when you die, of course. Add a pause menu if you can. That'd be very impressive. So, that's it. Goodbye.